two here in All Stars, I'm sure I'm quite well. John Plant has picked Jerome as someone to work with, and John Plant is going to address you. I take it for a starting point that the Corbyn fight over leadership of the Labour Party is the central question of the moment. It doesn't mean it's a central question of the year or the century, but it is. It does pull together all the questions that we need to deal with today. Corbyn has triggered off the emergence of a new mass anti-austerity movement. And the fight conducted today in the High Court is whether that new movement is to have a voice within the Labour Party or not. We don't know the outcome of that, but it's a central and very important question. Now that new movement is still in a very malleable condition. What its eventual nature is going to turn out to be is not yet determined. There are crucial actions and decisions that can be taken, that will or will not be taken over the next few months, that may lead to that movement clarifying and defining itself. And I just want to kick off a few questions and suggestions about the ways in which that might happen. That mass movement is not at this point, in my view, clearly an anti-capitalist movement. It is anti-austerity that is by far from being the same thing. Anti-austerity movements have been led to dramatic disaster. Greece is probably the most dramatic example in recent years. You could not have had a bigger, stronger anti-austerity movement, but it did not have an anti-capitalist theory and it did not have an anti-capitalist practice, and that led to the dismantlement of most of their welfare state, including their pensions, and disastrous consequences for the living standards of the Greek people. Now, Corbyn and Macdonald don't seem to be in any great hurry to bring the Labour movement to confront that kind of question at the moment. It's not clear whether that's strategic or whether it arises from lack of clarity on their own part. It would be wasteful, in my opinion, for revolutionaries to try to drive that new mass movement to leap over fences that, is not, it, that it is not yet ready to jump over. The nature of those fences it doesn't yet understand. And the Brexit decision, actually it seems to me paradoxically, is advantageous because it forces a delay and a thinking drinking time on considering those questions. There is then a chance to develop policies that would win mass support. The Labour Party's democratic conference system can be revived with Corbyn and Macdonald's support. Decades ago, when I was an active member of the Labour Party, we used to be able to move resolutions in ward parties and then in general committee meetings. And they would work their way up to the pyramid and they could be voted for at the Labour Party conference and would become policy if they were adopted by enough people. Blair abolished that. But we don't have to accept it's an abolition. It could be brought back. Likewise, Within the trade unions, we've seen and heard support from the bureaucratic leaderships for Corbyn, but not from the mass membership yet. We hope and we want to hear and see those kind of things happening at the TU annual conferences through the summer. 
We want to see branches and regions moving resolutions that explicitly say why this union supports Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonald in the leadership. There's an obstacle to that, which is, again, possibly for good reasons, possibly because they haven't made their minds up yet, Corbyn and McDonald haven't stated what their program is. Today, Corbyn's begun to say a little bit about it in his speeches, now that the official leadership contest has begun. But it's not a program. It's not enough for people to know whether they will vote for it, whether they will make sacrifices to win, to win it. So for people like me, revolutionaries who are outside the Labour Party, and I'm never going to be let back in the Labour Party, I've been told about that on, on the highest authority. How, how are we going to do anything except to make useful suggestions and to make contributions to the discussion? Not only am I outside the Labour Party, I'm outside of every democratic centralist group that I was ever a member of. Part of the new mass movement in the Labour Party explicitly rejects democratic centralism. That's an important question to deal with. Are revolutionaries going to go in there pretending that they're not democratic centralists? faking their policies and trying to win support, well, we know that's going to go nowhere. <laughs> but there's still an issue. <laughs> but there's an issue then of how the revolutionaries can bring themselves to trust the emerging mass movement and vice versa. seems to me that we have to make the maximum opportunity to promote democratic discussion within that mass movement. We have an opportunity to discuss a whole sequence of crucial issues where the Labour Party doesn't have a workable policy at the moment and it can be brought to do that. Transport is one of the most obvious. Almost everybody in the country agrees privatisation of the railways has been a disaster. You can get that back. And even the Tory South East would vote for that because they've had a disastrous experience of commuting. Roads would be a slightly different, more complex issue. Energy, we have to work out a democratic policy for the balance between coal, nuclear and renewables. There's a complicated arguments all around and the labour movement hasn't got a clear policy on it yet but we need to get it. How about the banks? Well actually the government already owns a big chunk of the banks and the labour government could make a lot of use of that ownership. And also let's remember the banks have not been punished for what they did in the great financial crash. Even the very minor issue of payment protection insurance is enough to put the existence of those banks at risk. And that's a trivial, trivial sum. A mere few billion compared to the damage they've done to our economy, our standard of living and our jobs in manipulating and creating the great financial crash. We are entitled to those resources being restored to us by the banks. We should be demanding it, and the Labour Party at this stage isn't. Okay, education. Most people by now seem to have recognised that academies are a disaster. We should be rolling back academies, we should be giving parents the right to reverse academisation by democratic vote. We should be reinstating central democratic planning of education in local authority areas. Housing. Okay, Jeremy Corbyn has decided that he's going to build a million houses. 
where are they going to be, and should they be in Britain at all? It's an important question. If people are coming to Britain to find jobs and houses, shouldn't the economic de development be taking place where they live? So there's all those discussions that we can take part in, we can promote through our trade union branches, through Labour Party meetings, whatever opportunities we can find. But there's another and tougher dimension to the whole discussion, which is about Bolshevism and revolution. Because you see, Bolshevism has never put democracy central to its approach. It's great if you want to vote with me on all these progressive measures. But if you're not, then with other Bolsheviks, I'm for insurrection and military takeover of the state to make all these things happen. And that's what you don't want to hear, but thank you for listening to it.